So what I want to have a look at in this video is a bit about the remote help that is available in Endpoint Manager and Intune. Now, where we find that is we go to endpoint.microsoft.com and then we go down here to the tenant administration. Now you'll see here that we have an option for remote help, but what we need firstly to do is go down to premium add-ons because the capability for remote help is in addition to the existing Intune licensing. And then what we need to do here is we can enable a trial and we will get, as you see here, 90 days. Now, if we have a look at the cost of this, if you were to purchase this outright uh, in Australian dollars, it's $4.80. Now, it's important to remember that you need a license for both the person who is assisting and the person that is being assisted. So you're going to need one for uh, each of these people. Now, when you actually purchase the license, in this case I've gone through and done a trial, you will also need to assign those licenses to users. So remember that. So not only do you have to purchase the license or enable a trial here, then what you're going to have to do is go in and assign that license to the user. Now, once you've done that, you can come back here to remote help. And then what you'll need to do is just make sure it is enabled under settings. So if we go into settings here, you'll see that it is enabled. And if it's not, you can go into configure here and you can enable and uh, disable that uh, if it is not there already. Okay, so once we've done all that, we are basically uh, good to go. So what I'm going to do here is just show you a bit of a difference in Quick Assist, which is the inbuilt help that comes with Windows and also the remote help that comes with Intune. Now, what I've got here uh, on the right-hand side is an end user environment, and then on the right-hand side, this is the administrator. So this is the person giving help. Now, you'll see on the left-hand side here of this screen, we have the remote help option. Now, you will need to uh, download that piece of software independently. Microsoft will uh, basically give you a link that allows you to uh, download that, install that on the device. Now, the Quick Assist obviously is part of Windows, generally built in. And if you do need to get it, you can go to the Microsoft Store and do a search for uh, Quick Assist there. All right, so what I'm going to do is just show you what the inbuilt quick assist uh, option is first so let's just minimize the remote help now what i'm going to do here is uh, basically get assistance right so i would call up uh, the person and say look i need some assistance uh, in my environment and that person then would launch their quick assist and it would then select the option here to assist another person now that's going to generate a code for us all right so what we're going to do is we're just going to take a copy of uh, that code you'll see it's valid for about 10 minutes and then what we need to do is pop back over here to uh, the person being assisted and they would uh, receive that from the other person I'm just going to type that in here and we'll then go to share screen remember this is the quick assist is built into Windows so it is free included there's no cost no licensing required uh, to do that so once we have popped in the code we need to pop back here and say look in this case what we want to do is take full control so i'm going to take full control uh, of that screen so this screen here that you see is the person who is uh, doing the assistance helping the other person so you'll see here once i've done that i have to go back to the screen and i have to then allow uh, the person where the assistance is taking place so let's allow that and hopefully that will connect us through shortly and then we should be good to go. So I'll go back to the administrator screen here and let me just uh, maximize this. All right, so you'll see here that we have uh, the screen that we are uh, assisting on in the background there. So let's just launch the browser. You'll see it launch uh, in full screen uh, basically over there. So again, this is a replica of uh, that screen there. All right, so again, you'll see that we can you know perform anything that uh, would happen uh, basically on that screen. So let's just go through that process here, finish that off, close the browser. Now, where some differences lie is the ability to get, um, you know, the elevator privileges. So what we're going to do here uh, on this machine is we're going to run PowerShell on our remote machine, but you'll see here we're going to select the option to run as an administrator. Now, as soon as we select that option, you'll notice we get the UAC on the uh, destination device here. And the only option is for the user then to put in the admin user and password, which is not what we really want. So that's a bit of a, 
uh, a bit of a blocker. What we get back here on the uh, quick assist screen here is basically a pause button, a blank screen, uh, nothing we can do here until someone goes and completes the UAC here uh, on the destination machine. So I'm not going to do that. So it'll pop back there and we should be back to uh, remote help there. So the big limitation when you're using the free inbuilt quick assist that comes with Windows, it's ability, uh, it's inability to accept the UAC, right? So unable to allow the administrator to elevate privileges without uh, the person who is being assisted seeing all this. So this is, again, a, a rather large limitation. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave the quick assist here and we will close that session down uh, over here. All right, and you'll see that that session has then ed ended. Now going back to the remote help option, this is the option that comes with Intune that does require uh, the licensing as mentioned. So I need to download the uh, appropriate software, uh, the remote help software, and that is mentioned uh, in the uh, console. And I'll need to sign in uh, as my Azure AD identity to achieve this, right? So we'll go in and accept that. And again, looks very similar here. The screen is slightly different. You'll see that I want to, again, get help. So I'm going to have to wait for a code. So let's go back over to the person providing the help, run the uh, remote help again. You'll see that I've already logged in as the user. So I'm logged in as super user here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, give help. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a code. Very similar process to the quick assist option here. So I'm gonna grab that code again, copy that and go back to the destination and I'm going to enter that code in there. All right, so we do submit and you'll see it goes through a very similar uh, acceptance uh, process here. So you'll see here that it does that confirmation and then it's going to ask the remote user whether they want uh, full control. Uh, at this point again, we're very similar to, so go back to this and let's take full control of the device, go back to the destination. You'll see that the person at the other end again has to allow very, very similar again to quick assist. So those two then set up the handshaking between them and again, we get this remote screen uh, and we're good to go. So we, you'll see that the buttons across the top uh, look very similar. So we've got the ability to move between different screens. We can also ink or pen uh, the page, we've got the actual size, we can copy and paste between, refresh, uh, or restart, sorry, and look at the task manager if we want. But you'll notice that we get this additional option here, which is the ability to uh, have our um, UAC capability. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, select that. All right, so if you're requested to access, you have requested access to the UAC prompt for the device, that you are helping. All right, so what we need to do is just go OK there. And what we're going to do is, again, we're going to go into the remote machine and we're going to run PowerShell. And we're going to run again as the administrator. Wait a second for that. And you'll see now the difference is, is that we get the UAC prompt displayed as the remote helper. So if I go back to the screen here, You'll see that that does also appear on the uh, user's screen, but I can go in here and as the administrator now, I can put in my uh, credentials and put in a password. Well, hopefully that is correct. And you'll now see uh, basically that uh, we've been able to run our PowerShell as an administrator. So you'll see at the top here, you'll see that uh, it would have run PowerShell uh, for whatever. So we needed to do an update here, but you get the idea. So the idea is that really at this point in time, the major difference between the remote help that comes with Intune uh, that does require additional licensing from around five dollars uh, per user per month currently really only gives you the major benefit of the uh, ability to see and interact with uh, the user uh, the uac control here so that's really the big difference between uh, the two here so again uh, if you look at quick assist 
All right, so this component is free and built into Windows. You can use that, but we'll have the limitation that it's unable to, the remote person providing assistance will not be able to interact with the UAC. To do that, they're going to need to sign up to, whoops, you're going to need to sign up to the uh, Intune, appropriate Intune licensing. All right, <clears throat> and then enable the remote help and put the appropriate software on the both devices and then use this remote help option rather than quick, quick assist. And that's going to give you uh, that UAC, that basically that UAC uh, capability. And again, the way that we enabled all this is we went into endpoint.microsoft.com. We went into the tenant admin. We went firstly into the premium add-ons and added an appropriate license, whether a trial or a paid subscription. And remember, you need a license for both the person assisting and the person who is accepting the assistance, right? So you need one for each end of the transaction there. And then you go into remote help and you make sure that that is configured. You'll see that you get the capabilities to monitor sessions and you get an audit trail of those sessions that have happened. So you do get a lot more auditing and I suppose capabilities and compliance, but there isn't a large amount of features as yet. We're expecting to see more uh, as the product matures, but at this stage, the major difference between the inbuilt free quick assist and that provided by the Intune uh, remote help is largely the ability to gain remote access to the UAC prompt. So the person providing the help can log in as an administrator account, do what they need to do without uh, needing the end user to uh, do that and potentially give away the admin login and password. So hopefully that video has given you a bit of insight into the remote help capabilities with Intune and some of the differences between that and the inbuilt free quick help or quick assist that comes with Microsoft Windows. Thank you very much for watching the video.